everyone. I hope you guys had an excellent cloud native security day. I know I did. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to participate in the CTF because I was so busy reading through all the chats and listening to all the amazing talks from our fabulous speakers and helping out to everybody that reached out for assistance, either through the Slack channels or through direct messages. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap up the event. Um, I'm Emily Fox. I'm the SIG Security Co-Chair and the Security Day Lead for the event. Um, and we're, we've got JJ, who's one of my other co-chairs and Brandon Lum, who is a technical lead for SIG Security. So we're going to talk a little bit more about SIG Security and how you can get involved with this awesome group of people, as well as do a full day event recap and open everything up for Q&A in case you're curious about anything else going on with SIG Security, or if you've got questions about anything associated with cloud native security. We've got some great stuff coming up for you. So Brandon. Thank you, Emily. Awesome. So I'm just going to go through a couple of slides. We're going to tell you a little bit more about SIG security um, you know, on top of what Emily has already shared this morning. And then we're going to go into the discussions. So awesome. What do we have for SIG security? Um, so Emily covered in the morning um, a little bit about presentations and discussions. Uh, this is something that's ongoing. As you can see, some of the, the topics here uh, or stuff that we've seen today, for example, Parsec. Um, there's some. There's a lot of topics that we have coming from um, the other working groups that uh, we work with. For example, the um, policy working group. Um, we work closely with uh, the NIST Big Data Working Group and so on. And as uh, Emily mentioned, you know, whenever there's a chance for community collaboration. Uh, for example, Ava dropped by from the Confidential Computing Consortium, and then we talked about you know the ways we could engage as a cloud native community. Um, so if you're in um, a community that would like to be uh, involved with cloud native security, or there is uh, you are you have a project that you think um, would be interesting to share about, um, do come create an issue. Uh, everything that we have is managed through our GitHub. Um, so another big thing that we have is uh, the supply chain catalog. Uh, this was something that was created a while back by um, by Santiago and a couple others. And uh, there was a lot of interest in the supply chain um, problems and security today. We even had a, a breakout um, hallway track session on that. And I think there were a lot of interesting links that were put in there. I think there was even a paper, it was called um, the Backstabbers Knives Collection or something. Also, a paper is definitely something to read. Uh, it's a cool title. So um, this catalog is community maintained. So um, I think based on the, the number of resources that were posted in the channel, uh, if you see that there's something that's missing, that missing from the catalog, or we can make improvements to it, um, please don't hesitate to create a PR against it. All right. So um, usually we have in-person meetups. So uh, this is something that hopefully next year we'll start resuming once um, things get back to normal. Um, so hopefully, um, I know Europe will be virtual, but maybe the next QCon and they will see each other again. And um, we also have security assessments. This was uh, is one of the core activities that we engage in. Um, today we have um, five security assessments already done. Um, these security assessments are a way to really assess the security posture of a CNCF project. Um, there's a lot of interactions with the TOC and helping them um, provide recommendations on uh, what is a project's um, security posture as well as as a secure if it's a security project for example how does it really fit into uh, the cncf ecosystem uh, and the the output of this project is a security document which um, you know we for these projects that we've already done um, it is a document where if you're interested in the project or you have been looking at one of these projects for example OPA, and you're not sure like where do you, where do I start in terms of security considerations? Um, 
the security assessment document is something that you should definitely take a look at. Um, it really is like a good introductory document. Uh, security assessments are also a good way to engage in the community. Uh, usually assessments are um, scoped about two, uh, about four weeks total, uh, where two weeks of it is the main review and assessment, and the rest is kind of putting together everything at the end, and then uh, working up uh, a summary of what the recommendations are. So it's um, very nicely scoped. Usually we have four to five reviews per assessment. Um, and so this is open to, to everyone. If you are someone that is new to this or uh, would like to learn, uh, we have opportunities to kind of uh, shadow, to kind of uh, join the channel to see what's happening with the security assessments. And if you're someone that's experienced with this, um, definitely come take a look and it'll be great to have more people on board. Um, so just a shout out to uh, all the security reviewers we've had since uh, we, we started uh, security assessments. Uh, thank you so much. We wouldn't have been able to do uh, the, the first five um, assessments, which was our first security assessment milestone. So how do I get involved with SIG Security? Um, SIG Security is um, mainly based on our GitHub repository. So if you go there, um, there's meaning information, stack information, uh, everything is governed in the GitHub repository. And so um, there is a new members page that you can take a look at. Uh, it tells you a little bit more about uh, SIG Security, uh, what we do as well as how to add yourself as a member to the group. Uh, we have weekly meetings that you can join in our Zoom session every Wednesday. Um, if not, what happens usually in the repo is everything is um, well documented in issues or pull requests. So if you actually go to a, the GitHub repo and you go into issues, uh, if you've seen anything in the previous slides that you're interested in, for example, you wanna um, present something about your project to the group or talk a little about you know, the, the security uh, practices within your organization, you can, uh, you can create an issue for a presentation and then you know, we'll start figuring out the logistics to, to let you present that. Or if you have a security idea that um, you would like to, you think could, the, the group could benefit from, you could add a proposal or a suggestion. And if you're a project that uh, would like to start a security assessment process, you can go ahead and create a security assessment issue. Uh, so with that, I'm going to wrap up this, this part of the closing. Um, like I mentioned multiple times before, <laughs> everything is on the GitHub. So if, if, um, if you remember one thing, um, just go to the GitHub um, CNCF slash security. Uh, our meeting times are uh, Wednesday, and we have a Slack link over here, uh, which is part of the CNCF Slack. And don't forget to sign up for our mailing list. All right, so Emily, back to you. That was awesome. Thank you so much, Brandon. Um, JJ, what was one of your favorite talks for today? I know I have a list and I know Brandon's got at least one, if not two. Um, but JJ, how about you? What was your favorite talk? Oh, JJ, I can't hear you. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, I'll first go with Brandon before I actually uh, go for it. I'll I'll have to digest my. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think for me, um, I think I had I had a couple of favorite talks. Um, um, I really like the you know the dynamic analysis, doing the S trace um, system calls. You're talking about EBPF and how it's kind of really evolved um, how people do analysis and dynamic, um, even just like the runtime security stuff. 
Um, I'm also like a big fan of any hardware security um, related things. So you know, the parsec presentations and also even uh, even the certificates. Um, I think we're talking about how we actually bootstrap the chain of trust to HSM. I think I thought that was cool. Yeah, definitely. Those ones were all really good ones. Um, I I think so. I, it's hard for me to like just pick one, but I I have to admit the UBK talk at the end of the day, right before the CTF wrap up, I thought was really cool because it highlighted um, a huge problem space that occurs in the community when we're trying to go cloud native because cloud native landscape is so large and security is like three miles long and like leagues deep. Um, but the the nice little shopping list that they put together for how to get um, some of these tool, tools to work together. And we, we heard about that earlier in some of the other talks that you can't just like pick one solution and just roll with it and you're automatically secure. You have to work on them a little bit. You have to build that defense in depth mentality across your organization because it's not just gonna be runtime security that's a concern, it's going to be all along your supply chain, it's going to be through your build, it's going to be through your pipeline, all of that. JJ, what about you? I mean, the UPPF talk was like the most fascinating one. Uh, I'd love, love to. Uh, there's so much, so much about the UPPF that's actually a mystery for most people in terms of, is it secure? Is it not secure? Is it kernel mode? Is it not kernel mode? Uh, and, um, uh, and I mean, as an industry, I think there's a lot of clarification. Uh, it's super powerful as a tool to be used and uh, super relevant for the modern day compute and a modern day networking overall, and especially modern day observability that actually provides much more security at scale. So I hope uh, uh, I hope there is more of those kinds of discussions and talks that uh, that happen to ease and comfort uh, users. There is also like a lot of doubts in terms of the versions of kernel where it's applicable to. So there is uh, there is there is tremendous amount of trepidation in terms of like adopting ABPF, and I think. Uh, more of those talks will actually help these. And I think it is much more relevant for security at scale for a, a lot of things. So that was my most favorite talk. Yeah, and I think I think also um kind of JJ talked about you know the modern modern cloud deployments and also Emily talked about you know just having to juggle um uh, different aspects of security, but then, you know, even like in the, the shared governance um, lightning talk where we talked about, you know, it's not even just different components of your security ecosystem, but when you have multiple parties involved, like your cloud provider, um, you know, how do you make sure that you have proper governance of that? You know, what, um, as a, as a, company or as a cloud user, um, how do I ensure that even my implementation of security meets up to the standards? How do I do compliance and auditability if I don't own certain services? Yeah, yeah policy distribution uh, at scale uh, computed with performance is uh, it's going to be a challenge and the more the computes are not under your control the more faster you want to like evaluate the security policies and it needs to happen closer to the edge uh, so it's going to be a that is something that actually was it's still fascinating and i think it should uh, we should pay attention to that as a whole I mean, overall, all the talks were phenomenal and fantastic, especially some that actually overlaid the industry uh, was also good. Uh, but this one was probably my favorite talk. 
So uh, we actually got our first question. Uh, one of our SIG security members decided to ask it. So um, Pushkar wants to know, what are our recommendations for security related talks to attend for the rest of KubeCon? And I can only assume that he's asking that because he's so in love with all the security talks that we had today at Cloud Native Security Day. And he can't quite get enough of it as we've seen in some of the other Slack channels talking about Security Day. So Brandon, what, what talk are you looking forward to or would you recommend in the KubeCon schedule? I'll be honest, I was going to look through this tonight. <laughs> I actually haven't had the time to look through, look through this. Um, I'm actually I'm looking through it right now. Um, All right, JJ, how about you? Yeah, give me a second. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in, uh, I'm in the same camp as uh, Brandon uh, in terms of... I think, um, yeah, I'm just looking through it quickly. I think there are a few, um, few things that could be interesting. Uh, unlike anything, which is kind of like bypassing security mechanisms, I think, you know, the, the one that um, that the Google team did uh, a couple of coupons back on like um, jumping between nodes. That one was cool. So there's a there's another one called um, bypass Falco. So I think this could be cool. You know, it was, it's going to touch on um, a lot of the, the the stuff that we just talked about, like eBPF. You know, it's it's a mystery. It's um, it's something cool, but I think this will be kind of a good insight and uh, a nice exercise to kind of see how. Um, how the threat model of that fits into uh, into applications as well. Yeah, for me, like I spent most of yesterday furiously combing through the schedule, looking at all of the talks. Um, the bypassing Falco one definitely stood out for sure. Uh, there were a couple of other ones though that I thought were really interesting. Uh, let me find that one. Uh, there's, I mean, pretty much any talk with Liz in it, uh, Liz Rice is going to be good. Uh, yeah. Man, there's just so many. And it, that's what one of the nice things is, is that we're starting to see more security focused talks with, um, or even just regular technical talks with the security bend to them, which is fabulous. And that's something that we want to see from the community. Uh, but yeah, it, I actually have my schedule viewable. So if you are, um, friends with me in Sketch, you can check out and see which sessions I'm going to if you're interested. Uh, yeah, I think I think ahead. the stop the Starbot one, Starbot is something that I looked at for for a bit. Um, it's definitely a cool observability as well as kind of get a good idea of what um, you know things within your cluster, uh, what's happening there. Um, I also I'm looking forward to the PKI, PKI the wrong way um, because that is something that although has been around um, is um, misunderstood a lot. And I think this is going to be, um, you know, help solidify some of the kind of mindsets and also, you know, hopefully give me another way to, to see it and to, to see how, how we can, you know, make sure we cover those grounds when, when we're implementing BKI. I feel like no matter how many times you do it, you can bound to make mistakes here and there. Yeah, we got another question. Um, for compliance automation, do we have any recommendations for a specific session? Um, I, I would like to point out that we had some excellent compliance check uh, coverage today with OPA. I think there was at least three talks discussed today that mentioned OPA or talked about policy enforcement um, and automation of policy rules. So uh, JJ, do you know of a particular talk or maybe a even specific technology that we can point folks to, to learn more in that space? Um, I mean, OPA is a, OPA is a pretty, good, uh, uh, pretty good first step. And I think there is also, uh, uh, bunch around uh, that's published 
closer to cloud security alliance that actually is, is somewhat of the intersection point of where we are. Uh, if you're looking purely for compliance, I think there are a bunch of standards based stuff that uh, that are available that uh, it's probably worth looking at. Uh, we do a lot of cross pollination between like a bunch of other uh, security consortiums to uh, ours. And I think if you were to uh, listen to some of the six security talks, like in the last previous four to five talks, I think a bunch of times compliance has come up in the conversation and uh, there are like few good recommendations there too. But in general, uh, there's good amount of resources in cloud security alliances that I would point to uh, overall. And then uh, attending six security meeting for more of uh, more of in-depth conversation uh, would be a useful thing. And compliance is like one of those things where like when your infrastructure is moving dynamically, anything that's been defined yesterday doesn't actually apply today. Uh, and it's uh, it's uh, it, it's good to have a scriptable compliance story to go with. Uh, but what you want to know is like what uh, how do you verify, validate, and then how do you basically assert what you have said, what's happening uh, in the system uh, when the infrastructure itself is changing, when uh, uh, computes are not the thing that you actually own. Is a it's a to a large extent, it's an open problem. So participating in community is probably what I would say to keep uh, ahead of what, what your compliance story should look like. So. Yeah, I think there are, there are like two, two or more of our talks um, in the security track. Um, but, but while we're on this, I think a couple other sessions that, or topics you know, outside KubeCon um, you know, Oscar uh, is one of them. Um, and also just, um, my personal way to kind of like look into the, the compliance. One of the things that I like doing is a lot of these, um, you know, products have kind of like this compliance mapping where they'll kind of say, okay, here's, um, here's a NIST standard. Here's where the specific controls, um, will map onto it. Um, we did some work as part of SIG with the um, the DOD. There was a spreadsheet somewhere. Uh, I I think we can link it in the the, the Slack channel later. Uh, but that kind of talked about a con what are some of the controls that you know Kubernetes or you know some kind of uh, scanning tools are going to meet. Um, but I think yeah, compliance is something that's uh, very specific to implementation as well as very specific to uh, the type of compliance that that you want to end up doing, whether it's, you know, um, FISMA or, or FedRAM yeah. or HIPAA. <laughs> but it usually boils down to NIST, so, so if you can map it onto some, some title of NIST 853, you should be fine. Yeah, you actually brought up a good point, and this is something that we've we've talked about quite a bit in the SIG, is that security and compliance are often lumped together, and they don't always mean the same thing. You can be more secure in some cases through implementing compliance controls, but you're not always going to be compliant when you're just implementing security out of the gate. So it's important to note that compliance rule sets and policy rule sets can help make your organization more secure when you're doing them correctly, but one does not always necessarily mean the other. Um, and we, we've talked about this uh, in a couple of previous meetings within the SIG, and it's actually going to be discussed briefly in the Cloud Native Security White Paper, which is going to go live tomorrow. So shout out to CNCF, the awesome folks there that have helped us uh, work through the logistics about getting that document published. Um, and it will become live in our repo after KubeCon Cloud Native Con is complete. That you the white paper also has a lot of a uh, lot of pointers to uh, it doesn't have a full story on compliance but it has a certain amount of indications to what to think through in terms of compliance so i'd highly recommend uh taking a look at uh, look at that as well yeah i think also um the policy work group that is run on wednesday as well um 
has some discussions. I, I looked at a couple of recordings for some of the sessions and they're talking about compliance in, in terms of the policy framework as well. So that could be a good place to, to go mm -hmm. to as well. Definitely, for sure. Um, what else did you guys like the most about Security Day? Overall, mostly because I've been so close to the Cloud Native Security white paper and getting that wrapped up, it was really nice to see that almost every single one of the talks were entirely about Cloud Native Security end to end, or at least how you manage or deal with a particular problem area in Cloud Native Security. Itai talked specifically about dynamic image security scanning and how that fits into your life cycle, which we talk about in the paper as well. Um, Alfie and Nick talking about the importance of your data source and the benefits of understanding what the data gives you for cloud native security. Kelly talked about security theater, which I think a lot of us are very familiar with. And the list just goes on and on. A lot of these topics are huge problems in the area where we're trying to move security forward. And there was a lot of that kind of like progression um, in many of the talks. What did what did you all think about the what was the most important theme or what were the biggest takeaways from today? For me actually I, I feel like um the, the cool thing was that we kind of see um the talks evolving to be targeted towards a more mature security posture of of running compute. You know, it's no longer um, or I'm just going to put some scanning stuff and then have the CI and have my cluster and our bank and I'm fine, right? We're going to be seeing a lot of more advanced problems, right? That's why we have um, cartographer. Um, you know, we're looking at service mesh. We look at, you know, how do I... So, uh, having service mesh, sidecars and, and authorization in Kafka, right? How do I bring it all together in a place that makes sense? Uh, we're not just talking about simple basic controls, but you know how do we tie the entire security um, um, picture together? So I think that that's what I, I got excited about, especially with a lot of the hardware stuff. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I'm curious to, to hear from everyone as well. You know, what are kind of future topics that that we can really go into? What's interesting? What are the new requirements that we're seeing? Uh, as we are getting more and more workloads moving to cloud native. Yeah. I mean, one of the talk related to that uh, that reminded me of is the uh, defenders think and list, attackers think and grab. That one was a yeah. Uh, I, yeah, there are like multiple people that talked about that as well uh, before. Uh, it, this isn't the first time, but uh, it's just fascinating for uh, as. As the services get more distributed, as the services are running everywhere, uh, the defense mechanism of early days of like just making it perimeter-based security doesn't actually really work. And, uh, now we have to look through uh, the defense mechanism in a completely different way to think through it. That I would highly recommend. Like any talk, any directionally uh, 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 Applications, either compliance verifications or even application of authorization policies that thinks about it in a graph-based way, it's probably a directionally right thing to do. Might be too early to be honest. I think it's still uh, still a lot to be decided in terms of performance when you're evaluating in that zone. But uh, directionally, I think that's probably a good uh, good way to think through security. Yeah, I think uh, one of the interesting things that we got a lot of is you're just because you're doing containers doesn't necessarily mean you're secure. Um, and we saw that through the CTF and it, it's unfortunate that Andrew had to drop offline. Uh, but if you were online before, he did a wrap up of the CTF and he went through all of the all the challenges and the flags. And this is our first time doing the CTF as part of Cloud Native Security Day. We wanted to do one of these for a while. And it, it's really awesome to see so many people, especially first timers in security or folks just sipping their toes into the water uh, to be so successful in their first container or escape. Um, did either of you have a chance to participate in the CTF? I know I didn't. 
I didn't. No, no. I, I didn't get to, unfortunately. Maybe next year when when we can take a break from running the we, event. Well, next we, year we should great. we should uh, get Andrew to give us uh, early access. <laughs> That's right. But exactly right. Uh, but yeah, the container security is super important, but container security isn't the only thing that's going on in the cloud native space. Um, we had a presentation at one of the SIGs recently about serverless security from the Cloud Native Security Alliance. And as of late, I, I mean, I've been getting a lot of newsletters from various sources about things that are going on in the security landscape. And serverless security has pretty much come up in the last 10 emails about it that I've gotten. So I'm, I'm curious, do you guys think we're gonna get some serverless security talks next year maybe? It's, that could be cool. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. It is, uh, it is a fascinating topic, serverless security, because it is the ephemerality of, makes it uh, harder to enforce a security that's actually consistent. Right? So yeah, I, I think it's harder, but at the same time, it's easier because uh, the good thing is really it's it's decompose your entire application, your, your entire enterprise into the smallest components. So you could technically. Uh, theoretically, have the best authorization yeah. policies ever. <laughs> That's, true. Um, That's true. But then you you yeah. also introduce the other side of it, which is um, that level of abstraction of compute and multi tenancy. Yeah, it's the difference between yeah. the container and the container. <laughs> Contained will be more secure. Container is assumed security, right? So <laughs> that's the. Uh, yeah, the, the nice thing about that and uh, with a lot of the other talks that we got, especially from the, the end user stories like with Yubico and um, one of the other presentations that we had earlier is that it kind of builds on the previous layer or the previous activities or the previous part of the life cycle to ensure that we're getting to that more and more secure state as compute gets more and more finite and smaller. So I'm, I'm curious to see what kind of talk submissions we're gonna get next year. I'm very excited about it. Do we have any other questions from folks? I know that we, we had a bunch of people drop off. At one point, we had like 60 plus people in the viewing area. Yeah, I think we're over time a little bit. I'm not sure whether we're going to get kicked off. <laughs> All right. Well, I will go ahead and wrap things up. I want to thank everybody for joining us for Cloud Native Security Day North America 2020. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, JJ. Thank you, all of the CNCF staff that helped make this possible, as well as the Cloud Native Security Day Program Committee. Without all of you here attending the event and volunteering and helping out, we could not make this possible. So thank you all so much. I hope you had a wonderful day. Yeah, I have to say big, big kudos yeah. to um, the CTF team. This is the one of the smoother CDFs I've seen run. <laughs> I want to give a big shout out to Emily for pulling the whole thing together and then uh, keeping it on track and getting the whole thing organized. So uh, shout out to Emily and shout out to Brandon for closing and then keeping it in sync. All right. Thank you all. Great. Thank you. Yep. Take care.